Hello, Squirrel Tribe. How you guys doing? Happy Saturday. So get this, Dollar Tree is having to pay out to workers in one city, in Seattle specifically. So in the city of Seattle, Seattle, Washington, Dollar Tree and the city of Seattle have come to terms over a settlement of $186,000. Now, the Seattle Office of Labor Standards investigated Dollar Tree stores for alleged violations of city labor laws, okay? The discount retailer will pay 301 employees over $180,000 divided amongst them in certain ways, not evenly, but certain ways, and the city over $6,000. So the city of Seattle will receive $6,000 from Dollar Tree, and the employees, 301 of them, will somehow split up $180,000 amongst, amongst the 301 of them. Violations were found at, according to this, at four different Dollar Tree locations in Seattle involving paid sick time, mandated rest and meal breaks, and the failure to provide workers a two-week notice of work schedules, which is required by Seattle's Secure Scheduling Ordinance. What is interesting to me, it says here, these findings underscore the importance of adherence to labor laws, especially for global companies like Dollar Tree operating in Seattle. This is according to a guy named Stephen Marchese, who's the director of the Office of Labor Standards in Seattle itself. Violations impact not just the workers, but also their families and the overall economy. And according to them, they reached out to Dollar Tree and Dollar Tree was like, mm, we have nothing to say. They haven't responded. What I find very interesting here is that Dollar Tree is getting dragged for the fact that these four different Dollar Tree locations in Seattle, sorry, drop my iPad, um, have not done the right things by their employees. 301 of them somehow over four stores. That's a lot of employees over four stores. If, if you really want to stop and think about it, how many employees do these four stores actually have to equal 301 employees? We've talked about it before, how a lot of people are finding it hard to find a job. And when they do find a job and they do get hired, they're hoping for part-time. They really want full-time, obviously, for that 401k and the benefits and whatnot. But a lot of places are hiring part-time. And you're, you're like, okay, fine. I can, work up to, I can work the 20 to 30 hours a week, right? And then you get in there and they're like, well, we'd like you for two hours on Tuesday, an hour and a half on a Thursday, four hours on a Saturday, and that's it. Like, that's all they give you. So to have 301 employees amongst four of the different stores um, that have had the issues, that to me says they have hired a lot of people to work very minimal hours, which is why so many people right now are working two, three, and four jobs. You have people who work a nine to five and then go deliver pizzas, if you will, for Domino's or Papa John's or Pizza Hut or wherever. I think Marco's delivers too. There's a lot of different pizza places. Little, Little Caesars does not deliver. They use... Um, DoorDash, I think, for deliveries for Little Caesar, at least in Georgia when we would get it there. Um, but you have so many people who are trying to find ways to work three and four jobs because places are not giving them the correct hours. And then on top of not giving you enough hours to work, they're screwing you over on your meal breaks and your paid sick time. And this whole thing of two week notice of work schedules. As somebody who used to manage literally a few different stores when I was in a corporate America setting, right? I managed some uh, Fortune Fortune 250 stores technically, and we had to do our schedules very much ahead of time. And it's up to the managers, up to management, not corporate, to make those schedules. So when I read this, I'm like, you know, Dollar Tree is getting dragged and Dollar Tree as a corporation is now having to pay out $186,000 total for these four stores, these four stores in Seattle who have basically not done their jobs correctly and what it really comes down to is shitty management. At the end of the day, it's not really Dollar Tree that owes these employees, these 301 employees, this money. It's those four managers and assistants or however many managers they have working at these four different locations that have not done their job accordingly. The managers at those stores did not set the schedule like they should have two weeks in advance. The managers at those stores were not giving people breaks that they you know, have to have, legally have to have. The managers of those stores were not giving them, um, let's see, what was the other one? Paid sick time, not giving them what they, what they were owed, technically. It's not on the corporation. And we see these names, these corporate names being dragged all day long, whether it is Dollar Tree, it's Walmart, it's Target, it's all these other places. And at the end of the day, is it really the corporation that's making some of these um, errors in judgment or lapse uh, uh, in judgment? No, it's the people 
that are put in charge of their locations that are making these decisions that are really hurting the, the company in the grand scheme of things. You have, I think, 35 different stores, maybe 35 closing uh, in Ohio alone of Family Dollar and Dollar Tree, 35 stores, I believe it was. And they're saying it's because of theft and, and all these other things because they're not making money and stuff like that. Well, is it really because of theft or is it due to poor management who aren't um, keeping up with what's going on, who aren't keeping track of inventory, who are letting people walk out the store without paying, who aren't doing their due diligence as management to ensure that their stores are running safely and securely and turning a profit like they're supposed to. So when I see stuff like this, I try to look at it from different angles, not just, oh, Dollar Tree's, you know, pulling Dollar Tree stuff again, you know, Dollar Tree's trying to be like Walmart. No. A lot of times the people that are in positions of power, excuse me, and management is considered a position of power, sometimes those people either let it go to their head and don't do their job the right way, or they're not qualified for that job to begin with, and this is where you end up with, because of the, the mistakes they made, now you have these, these corporations having to pay out. I think it's great that the corporations are paying and these employees are getting what they are owed, but I can guarantee you those four stores in Seattle either are going to end up with all new managers or those four stores are going to close down because of this. It's a lot of money to shell out in a place where everything costs $1.25 with some $3 and $5 things. But I, I see that uh, Seattle itself has had a lot of issues when it comes to retail spaces and theft and um, unemployment issues and drug use. We talked about this in a couple of different videos uh, recently, but there's a lot of iffy stuff going on in Seattle to begin with. But when I saw that, I was like, it's not really on Dollar Tree itself, but because of what's happening there, the people who work in those locations are probably going to get even less hours now because now the store is probably going to get hit with that $180,000 to their back page. I know as somebody, again, who worked corporate, corporate America and managed massive stores who, who, you know, I had numerous million dollar stores, multiple million dollar stores. Um, when your company is forced to pay out because of something your store has done wrong, I never dealt with this, but I've seen other stores that did. When your company is forced to pay out for something your store has done, the company isn't going to eat it. They're going to send that on to you. So those four stores are now going to have to and probably divide up that $186,000 settlement from Dollar Tree to the, 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 the employees in the city of Seattle and put it on their back page. So now let's say next uh, year they were expected to sell $500,000 worth of stuff. Well, now they have to sell $500,000 and plus their quarter of that $186,000 which I'm not doing math in my head, it will come out wrong. So y'all can pull up a calculator for that. Uh, they're going to have to add it to their back page and that will now be added on to something they must do in order to keep their job, in order to get their bonus, in order to hit their numbers, any of these kind of things. Those are the issues that I think are going to be what closes down locations. They'll blame it on theft at the end of the day because it sounds better than saying, oh, we hired somebody and put them in a position they were not suited for. We hired somebody who hurt our name by letting, you know, things go wrong and it cost us more money. And so now we have to close that store because we can't recoup the money that we had to pay out because of the mistakes the people we put in charge have made. I think it's very interesting and something to pay attention to when you're seeing these places close down and you're hearing these corporations come out and say, oh, we have to close this and this and this, or we're revamping this, this and this. What are the real reasons behind it? People want to say the economy is trash right now. Nobody's spending money. And there will be instances of that, obviously, but I can tell you if you step back from that negative mindset or the, the people that are telling you that the economy is like fully trash and look everywhere else, people are still out there spending money like there's no tomorrow. The housing market, people are still buying houses. Cars, people are still buying cars. Um, even, you know, Best Buy, random electronics are still being purchased. All kinds of things. The, the online ordering from Amazon and Timu and Sheen and all these other places through the roof. 
you go into a Sephora and Ulta, there's a ton of people in there spending money. Same thing at Walmart and Target. Money is being spent. So when I see these stores closing down, in my brain, I'm going, it's not because there's not enough money going in. It's because they have done something incorrect and there's too much money going out. Either they have overextended themselves and bought too much inventory and they're not selling the inventory fast enough and therefore they have to close down or they've hired too many people and they're losing money that way. They have not done their inventory correctly and so when things do go missing it hurts them even more plus you know the theft and whatnot but when you see something close down I, I say step back and, and really think about why it's closing. Is it actually the economy or is it because that location itself has done something um, that made it so it could not sustain livelihood or you know life if you will. Now we talked um, maybe two or three weeks ago about some big changes that are coming to Dollar Tree with the price increases and I told you you know it used to be that everything was a dollar like I have this um, let me see if I can get this thing to work. So look, y'all remember this? Back in the day, the Dollar Tree used to have a sign underneath it that said everything's a dollar. They can't do that anymore because barely anything in there is a dollar. And I talked to you about how it went from a dollar to a dollar 25 and starting very soon, I wonder, I don't remember if there's a specific date. I think it's August, July or August, price increases will go up to $1.50 on the majority of things in the store from $1.25 to $1.50. So in the last two, three years, that is a 50% increase from $1 to $1.50 on these products. It's a 50% increase. And they want to tell us inflation is like 2%. Mm -hmm, bullshit. So you have that happening. And then you have them, when they first brought in their three and $5 aisle, people were like, why are you charging so much? Well, now they're going to have a five and $7 aisle. So you're going up in price is there as well this is me saying if you want to ensure you can save a little bit of money now is the time to go into your Dollar Tree your local Dollar Tree location and pick up these non-perishable items and basically stock up on them because I've said it before a quarter doesn't seem like that much but they do add up over time and if you can get them for a quarter cheaper now that's a lot of money you're gonna save versus paying a quarter more for each thing in just a couple months. So what Dollar Tree has said, their non-perishable go non -perishable goods will be going up 25%. So when evaluating products to buy before prices go up, focus on non-perishable goods that you regularly use. Items like cleaning supplies, personal hygiene products like toothpaste and soap, and basic office supplies offer long-term value because they don't expire and will always be needed. Dollar Tree has hinted that products in these categories will be on the price increase list. So if you use Arm & Hammer or Gain or any of the, what is the, what is that one cleaning one that starts with an F? Fabuloso, if you use that, that stuff works really well. All these different things in the cleaning department, that little back wall at most Dollar Trees that are right now $1.25 that used to be a dollar just two years ago will be $1.50 before the end of 2024. Go get those now and stock up on them. The little Dawn uh, dish soaps, you know what I'm talking about? The little things of Comet, all those things. Get them now. Also, your seasonal items off season. So it says here, after the holiday season, decorations, wrapping paper, and related goods will not only be more affordable, but are also more likely to face price hikes as the next season approaches. So your Easter stuff just, well, technically not just passed. It was like a month or so, or what is today? The 20th? Oh, 420. So like three weeks ago. They might still have Easter stuff. They might not. They might still have... Um, St. Patrick's Day stuff, they might not. But whatever is coming up next, 4th of July, buy it while you can because next year, again, the prices will go up. It could be on that 25 cent price hike. It could end up on a $3 aisle instead. So get what you can right now while things are cheaper before prices go up. There are plenty of other things out there where we're going to see price increases, but we know for a fact that Dollar Tree is increasing their prices for a fact they have told us they have given us a heads up this is me reminding y'all of said heads up so you can get the things that you need everybody has a little pantry or some little space where they have their extras of stuff whether it's an extra roll of toilet paper paper towels whether it's you know cleaning supplies whatever go organize that space and if you have the ability now to spend a couple extra dollars without it hurting you i would say go get those things that you use regularly from dollar tree and just buy a few more of them while you can there's also 
everyday essentials with a twist um, household basics powered by technology or niche markets like led light bulbs eco-friendly cleaning products things like that stock up on them because they will be going up durable goods it says uh, kitchen utensils storage containers or even basic apparel items made from sustainable materials might see a price change when they say might just go ahead and assume it will so when you go in there you know you can go down and get the betty crocker um tupperware you get i think two of them for a dollar 25 that will be a dollar 50 soon if not more go ahead and get more of those if you need them same thing with like the the pasta strainers and the stirrers and the whisks and the oven mitts all those things that were a dollar then were a dollar 25 well before the end of two, 2024 will be a dollar 50 go get what you think you might need as your replacements or your backup or your whatever else don't go out there and overspend don't go out there and think that you need 10 whisks. You don't, unless you have a cake making business or you really like to give whisks away as Christmas gifts. You don't need 10 of them. Maybe one in case the one you have breaks or whatever, but don't go like buck wild. You know, make, make smart decisions there. Personal care products. Your grooming products will go up in price. Party supplies will go up in price. School and office supplies will go up in price. They will go up in price before the next school year begins. So go out if you have kids grandkids nieces nephews whoever neighbors that you help with any kids in the neighborhood you want to help with if you do that um um stuff the bag kind of thing you know where you help with the school districts where you you help them with backpacks for kids who are in uh underprivileged families if you will or lower income families now is the time to go to dollar tree and stock up on the things they may need the markers the crayons the coloring books pencils things like that before again they go up the difference in school supply prices just from when my daughter went into middle school uh, going into sixth grade a couple years ago to next year going into ninth grade the price difference is huge from fourth grade to sixth grade was huge because that's when covid hit and when everything came back out and everybody went back into school the prices seemed to have tripled on everything you used to be able to go get all your kids school supplies for a a, like a normal fee a normal amount of money where it didn't when you got to the register you're like oh that hurts is that a is that a heart attack is that heartburn is that a panic attack is that just the price of school supplies what is that it's the price of school supplies they have gone friggin buck wild and so now when we know there are going to be even more price increases if, if dollar tree is increasing their prices y'all you have to understand that walmart and these other places are not going to be too far behind because they can that's the thing they can so just something to keep in mind um but that's that's about it for that i just wanted to bring all that to your attention because i think it's important that we stay in the know with what is going on outside of all the normal things that people talk about excuse me the war and immigration and things like that although i do have a whole thing on immigration i want to talk to you about um youtube is not liking it when i talk immigration so i put it up on patreon you're free to go over there and join if you'd like to support the channel and hear what i have to say about that not just at the southern border from hispanic nationals if you will and everybody else but what's going on with you know the chinese immigrants also it's it's, it's a lot y'all uh, but i hope you're having a fabulous saturday thanks for letting me have this conversation with you again it's something that interested me and i just wanted to share my interest with you guys and do not look at how bad my nails are just they're awful we got to fix that soon but i love y'all have a fabulous rest of your saturday and i'll see you guys again on monday my dudes bye